Here is the story of Alexander Hamilton, America's first Secretary of the Treasury, the founding father who was on the $10 bill, a brash and brilliant man who died in a duel and left a legacy that continues to this day. Alexander Hamilton tells of his impoverished upbringing in the West Indies, journeying to New York City to attend college just before the Revolutionary War, writing in defiance of the King of England, acting as senior aide-de-camp to General George Washington, and helping to create a stable government for the new nation. The America that Hamilton knew was largely agricultural and built on slave labor. He envisioned something else, a multiracial, urbanized, capitalistic America with a strong central government. Such an America would be a land of opportunity for the poor and for immigrants. His vision put him at odds with his arch rivals, Thomas Jefferson, Aaron Burr, and others who preferred a pastoral America in which the federal government would remain small and weak. Hamilton's story epitomizes the American dream, a poor immigrant who rose from poverty through his intelligence and ability. He made good in the new, new nation and helped to create the United States of America. When Temple Grandin was born, her parents knew that she was different. As a baby, she was silent and unresponsive. As a toddler, she threw violent temper tantrums but never spoke a word. It wasn't until years later that she was diagnosed with autism, a brain disorder that makes communication difficult. Temple's father wanted to put her into a mental institution, but her mother believed in her, and so Temple went to school instead. Today, Dr. Temple Grandin is a brilliant scientist and professor of animal science at Colorado State University. Her world-changing career has revolutionized the livestock industry. Every year, half the cattle in the United States are handled in cruelty-free facilities she has designed. She is also a passionate advocate for autism, using her experience to prove that people with this disorder can have great lives. To achieve this unprecedented success, Temple used one of the strengths of autism. She thinks visually, the same way animals do. Because she thinks in pictures, she can see the world as a cow or a dog or pig might see it. And she knew that animals raised for food deserve good lives and should be treated with respect. Now she gives them a voice. Temple has more than earned respect for herself too, but things weren't always so easy. In this compelling biography, the author Cy Montgomery takes us inside Temple Grandin's extraordinary mind and opens the door to a broader understanding of autism. During the final year of World War II, the Nazis occupied Hungary. They sent hundreds of thousands of Hungarian Jews to concentration camps. The remaining Jews, knowing they would be next, desperately begged other countries for help. Raoul Wallenberg was a good speaker and a good listener. He was brave and confident. He knew five different languages, and when the Swedish government needed a diplomat to send to Hungary, Raoul was the man for the job. With his, with his official-looking Schutzpass, documents that promised Swedish protection to the people who carried them, Raoul boldly saved thousands of lives. He was a hero. Today, Raoul Wallenberg's fate remains unknown, but his name is one for the world to remember. In this entrancing account, space traveler Michael Collins recalls his early days as an Air Force test pilot, his training at NASA, and his unparalleled experiences in orbit, including the Apollo 11 mission, the first manned lunar landing. The final chapter to this autobiography, revised and updated for this edition, is an exciting and convincing argument in favor of mankind's continued exploration of our universe. Marie Curie's story has fascinated and inspired young readers for decades. She began as the poor Polish girl, Mania Swodowska, who waited eight years after high school until she could afford to study at the Sorbonne in Paris, only to become one of the most important scientists of her day, winning not just one, but two Nobel Prizes. Her life is fascinating, filled with hard work, generosity, and tragedy. Her recent her researches into radioactivity and her discovery of the elements radium and polonium while working with her husband, Pierre Curie, changed science forever. But she is less well known for her selfless efforts during World War I to establish mobile X-ray units so that wounded French soldiers could get better care faster. When she might have earned huge profits from her discovery, she chose not to, making her methods and findings known and available to scientists everywhere. As a result, this famous woman spent much of her life in need of money, often to buy the very element she discovered, and it would also turn out that her important work with radium was slowly killing her. What does it take to go from a fear of heights to dancing above the stratosphere as the world's first woman of color to travel into space? From making mud pies on the south side of Chicago to majoring in chemical engineering at Stanford University at age 16 and traveling the back roads of West Africa as the Peace Corps' youngest medical officer? It takes humor, courage, imagination, a keen intellect, and a stubborn streak. It takes one extraordinary person. As a child, Mae Jemison discovered in kindergarten that the world already had a job picked out for her, but not the one she wanted. She learned that becoming who she intended to be could be as tricky as finding the wind's final destination. 
In this warm, intimate autobiography, Dr. Mae Jemison shares funny, sassy, and inspirational anecdotes from moments in her life. Before Carl Linnaeus began classifying organisms, before John James Audubon drew birds from the wild, before Charles Darwin proposed his theory of evolution, there lived a 13-year-old girl named Maria Marion who loved to draw bugs. With a keen eye and a deft hand, she rendered soft green caterpillars, papery winged moths, and the dazzling intricate beauty of the butterflies. But drawing these fascinating creatures wasn't enough for Maria, she wanted to understand their small mysterious lives. Where did they come from? What did they eat? And perhaps most miraculously of all, was there a connection between creeping caterpillars and beautiful butterflies? With no formal training or university education, Maria Marion took on the role of artist, adventurer, and scientist in 17th century Europe, a time where women were rarely allowed responsibilities outside the home, and unusual interests led to accusations of witchcraft. Her intrepid fieldwork and careful observation helped uncover the truth about metamorphosis and changed the course of science forever. The Newbery Honor winning author and poet Joyce Sidman masterfully paints a riveting portrait of Maria Marion, the girl who drew butterflies, the woman who has been called the world's first ecologist. On a cold February night in 1861, President-elect Abraham Lincoln swapped his trademark black top hat for a soft wool one. Now disguised, he swiftly made his way through the crowds and boarded a train for Baltimore. Abraham Lincoln wasn't meant to be a passenger on this train. He had been scheduled for a different trip, a trip that would likely have led to his death. Luckily for Lincoln, Alan Pinkerton, America's most famous detective, was on the case. Utilizing his network of undercover spies and innovative strategies, Pinkerton discovered the presidential assassination plot. But uncovering a plot to murder the president is one thing. Stopping it is entirely another. Could Alan Pinkerton save the most important man in America? Lincoln's life wasn't the only one on the line. With counterfeiters, train robbers, thieves, and armed outlaws as his nemesis, Pinkerton would have to keep himself alive, too. Lincoln's spymaster tells the dangerous and action-packed adventures of Alan Pinkerton, America's first private eye and Lincoln's most trusted spymaster. Allison Leslie Gold, author of Memories of Anne Frank, brings us the fascinating and little-known story of Chiyune Sugihara, a Japanese diplomat who saved the lives of thousands of Jews during the Holocaust. In 1940, Sugihara moved with his wife and children to Kaunas, Lithuania, where he was assigned the position of vice consul. As the war escalated, Jewish refugees desperate to escape descended on the Japanese consulate by the hundreds, begging to be issued visas. After much deliberation and consultation with his wife, Sugihara decided to grant the visas against the wishes of his superiors, working from each day, from early in the morning until late into the night, he painstakingly wrote hundreds of visas by hand. Woven into the story of Chiyune Sugihara's incredible life are the experiences of Jewish families whose lives were fa forever altered by his bravery. Allison Leslie Gold's poignant book offers an unforgettable account of one of the largest rescues of Jews during the Holocaust. In the Jerry Mock story, Nancy Rowe Pym recounts the adventures of Geraldine Jerry Mock, the first woman to fly solo around the world. In her trusty Cessna, the Spirit of Columbus, also known as Charlie, she traveled from Columbus, Ohio, on an eastward route that totaled nearly 23,000 miles. Overcoming wind, ice, mechanical problems, and maybe even sabotage, Mock persevered. Mock caught the aviation bug at seven years old when she rode in a fo Ford tri-motor plane at a local festival. In high school, she displayed a talent for math and science, and she was the only woman in her aeronautical engineering classes at Ohio State University. Although she then settled into domestic life, she never lost her interest in flying. When her husband joked that she should fly around the world, it inspired her to pursue her childhood dream. But the dream soon became a race, as another woman, Joan Merriam Smith, also sought to be the first to circle the globe. Although Mock beat Smith and accomplished what her heroine Amelia Earhart had died trying to do, her feat was overshadowed by the Vietnam War and other world events. Now, Pym introduces Mock to a new generation of adventurers.